In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Morales Streams to watch a wallet address for anything that happens to the assets in that wallet so that you can stay up to date on their transactions, transfers, and any other smart contract event or activity that they do in real time. And in order to accomplish this, we're going to be using Morales Streams, which is our real-time API product that lets you monitor wallet addresses across any chain that we support. You can monitor one address, you can monitor 100 million addresses, you can monitor common events like transfers, you can monitor custom events for your smart contract by sending in the ABI and then filtering based on that. And uh, there are many use cases uh, in terms of monitoring uh, for asset changes or notifying users about certain events that they're doing. Um, and the end result will be that we'll be able to transfer an asset. So here I have a MetaMask wallet with some testnet coins. I can send a transaction to another test account. And these are all monitored in my Morales streams at the moment. I'll send the Sepolia testnet transaction. And as you will see when I'm sending this, in my webhook watcher here, this is an old one, once I send this, you will see that as soon as this turns green confirmed, we're going to get a webhook here on the left. We even got it before <laughs> MetaMask. Look at that. Uh, so we already got the webhook. Boom, here we go. And this tells us that we did a transaction from address to address, how much we sent, all of that good stuff, how much gas we used, the transaction hash, the block number, all of that is instant. So that's what I'm going to show you how to set up in this video so that you also can monitor wallet addresses. All right, let's get started. And in order to get started, we need to head over first to morales.io. And here's where you'll need to sign up for a free account. Or if you already have an account, you can click login. And then once you've signed in, you'll get here to, uh, to the developer portal. And here uh, you'll find access to all of the Morales uh, products like our APIs for NFTs, tokens, wallets, uh, blockchain data, market insights, Solana, and so on. And you'll also find our nodes, for example, which is RPC nodes that you can use for all of these protocols and networks. We'll also find streams, which is where we will be spending our time for this video. And here is where we create the setup which eventually will send us the webhooks books in real time when events happen on chain. And we can use that to monitor wallets for any types of transactions or custom smart contract interactions. In this scenario, we're going to monitor a wallet for any type of asset transfer. So transactions or token transfers, and it will send us a webhook every time that wallet sends or receives any type of uh, those assets. And it's going to work across any smart contracts or any tokens or uh, any uh, native transfers and we can deploy that for all chains at in the single uh, stream if we want to in this case though we're going to use ethereum sepolia uh, because then i will be able to show you some transfers uh, testnet transfers in my wallet and we'll see it actually fire the webhook so in order to get started we're going to create a new stream here and select the evm stream option and the first is to set up what type of events we want to track. And we're going to select native transactions, internal transactions, and contract events. Uh, this will be everything that would impact the balance of the wallet. We're also going to exclude potential spam uh, tokens. Hit continue. What types of contract events do we want to track? So this is for the contract events uh, section that we selected here. Because any token transfer is a smart contract event. It's a transfer event of a smart contract. And we want to click on common events and then select token transfers. And then hit continue. And that's going to include also the token transfers. What additional data should be included? We're not going to select these two uh, because we already have selected transactions as part of our like source data. And also transaction uh, logs we're not going to use. Here we'll put a stream type which is just so we can keep track of it. This will be part of the response body. So I'll select, I'll put in wallet watch. And then we're going to hit continue. And, and this tag has no significance apart from you just uh, kind of having a, a category for your for your stream. Which addresses do you want to track? Here is where we'll input a wallet address that we're going to use uh, to, to watch. So here you can input one address. You can input uh, um, many addresses. You can paste them in here. Or you can use the API to like load in a million addresses. And this will support like hundred, hundreds of millions of addresses. Anything you throw at it 
it will watch it for you and it will send you a webhook. It's incredibly scalable. I'm just gonna input this one address that I have here, uh, 0x79d, which is an address that has uh, some assets on uh, ETH Sepolia. So I'll copy that and put it in here. I would recommend you to uh, get you some testnet tokens on ETH Sepolia or to kind of watch an address that you know has lots of transfers going on. And that way you can um, see when everything's happen. Mm, hit continue. Oh shit, we need to hit add others. So it's there, you can also add multiple ones. Then we hit continue. And here we're gonna select the chains that we want to listen to. And here, I mean, you can select all. And uh, that will work just, uh, just fine. In this case though, I'm just gonna be working on each Sepolia, so I'll select that. But this stream setup, because we're watching for any contract event that matches a transfer or a native transfer transaction, it will be the same across all networks. So uh, you can use the same stream for all of the networks that we support. Then hit continue. And then we can enter a block number to verify that our stream was correctly set up. We can see the response. So I happen to, to know that this address that I inputted, that has a transfer here of uh, 0.19 ETH on this testnet. So I'll click on this transaction hash and I can copy the block number and tell streams to uh, eat the polia, uh, test stream, and, and tell it to kind of replay what would have happened if this was a live block so that we can see if we set it up correctly. So I'll hit test stream, and then it will give us what the response would have been if this was an actual webhook. And we can see here that we get the chain ID, we can see that this is confirmed block, we get the ABI of the contract that was interacted with, or the event, this was a transfer event. Uh, it gives us number uh, information about the block, the timestamp, and then it will give us either logs, transactions, transactions internal, uh, transfers, approvals, NFT transfers. In this case, the only thing that has an actual value here is the transactions array because this was a native transaction. And then you can see in here we have one object and it has this transfer of uh, uh, 0.1969 ETH because there are um, decimals for uh, for, for ETH, you would have to convert this, divide by 18, I believe, or divide by 10 to the power of 18 to get to the value that we saw here. Uh, but you also get all the information about from, to, and uh, like how much gas was used, and the transaction hash, and all of that stuff. And uh, we can do the same before we go live with this for a token transfer. You can see what that looks like as well. So this address also has a token transfer in another block of an ERC-20 token. I'll input that block here, and we can test it on that block. And we can see what that would look like. So here we will have instead an object in the ERC-20 transfers array. And here we can see uh, who triggered it. So that would be like um, the from address. And uh, then, because when it's a smart contract, you have one being the smart contract address that actually sent you the tokens, but then you also have someone triggered this transfer. Uh, and you can see the token name. This is Chainlink token on testnet. Uh, you can see the link, uh, so the symbol, the decimals, and value where we've also applied the decimals for you. Uh, so there was actually 25 tokens sent, but here's the real raw value of it. You're gonna see that we class this as non-spam, which makes sense. And uh, that is it. So now we can see that the configuration actually works, and now we can continue and actually deploy this. And for that, we're going to need uh, a webhook where we're going to send uh, this data every time um, a transfer or transaction happens. And this would of course be where you put your actual server URL or app URL where you want the webhook delivered. Um, for this little demo, I will just use a site called webhook.site, which will allow us to just display the incoming webhooks here in a UI. But if you're actually implementing this for a real application, uh, you could use, first of all, something that's called Grok to uh, pipe the webhook to your local uh, local host server while you're developing. Um, and then eventually you'll put this as your real server URL. What's important to know is that uh, once, uh, when you uh, input the URL the first time, you need to verify it. And that's going to send an empty uh, webhook in the format that we saw in the previous test. But it's going to send it with zero transactions your backend needs to respond with a status code of 200. And it needs to do that for all webhooks, but it's important that you know that even 
this first one is going to be sent and I'll show you what that looks like. So over at webhook.site, uh, I'm going to copy my unique URL here and I'll add it as the webhook URL here. I'll click continue and that's going to send a uh, webhook here to the uh, tool here. And you see, as you see, it's completely empty. This is what the uh, webhook looks like. And this responds to 100 with status 200 automatically. So that means that this all succeeded, response to 100 received. If it doesn't, you'll get an error here and you'll need to look into that. Now we can click save and deploy. And now you can see that this stream is, uh, is live. We could also, I didn't put an actual name to it. We'll put the same thing here. Wallet, watch, save. There you go. And this is uh, now, it sends uh, these empty ones when I deploy it and then when I save it again. Uh, but now if I send the transaction uh, from this wallet that we're watching, it will now very quickly show up in the UI here. And I will show you this now. So I'll bring up my wallet that has this address. And let's see, I'm gonna create a new wallet here so I can send it. Well, it, yeah, I'll send it to another account of mine. So I'll create an account, test two. And then I'm gonna send some Sepolia ETH. I'm gonna send that to test two. I'm gonna send it to 0 0.01, okay? Click next, confirm. And now just gotta wait for that to, first of all, be added to a block. Once it's added to the first block, you will get one webhook. And then once it is confirmed, we will get a second webhook. So it's already here. Um, and you can see that the transaction is here. And in this case, our address is at the from address. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can also see a confirmed fault. So once this transaction is confirmed, meaning that a certain block num blocks have passed after it, you will get another webhook. And if you want to use the first one or the later one, the unconfirmed or the confirmed one, that is up to you. You will get both. If you want, you can ignore one of them based on this confirmed flag. Uh, but you saw how quick that was. Uh, directly when it was uh, sent here, it basically shows up in the UI. So it's incredibly quick. And also if you are on an enterprise plan, you also have um, SLAs with deliverability guarantee. So you'll never miss a webhook ever. Uh, so it's incredibly important if you have a critical application that you rely on to get the notifications and you can't really rely on, let's say, RPC nodes or so you need something that's 100% reliable. And in that sense, uh, in that case, streams is definitely the way to go. And there, and there we also got our um, confirmed webhook. And here you can see that confirmed is now true. But other than that, the uh, transaction content is exactly the same. It's just that you can choose which one that you want to, uh, to uh, use depending on your use case. Or you can use both if you want to display it as unconfirmed and then as confirmed. That is your preference. And the same thing works with the tokens. So if you want to send these uh, link tokens, let's see here. Do, do, do. I'm going to send that to our test2 account. I'll send one link token. Let's see, it confirmed. And once again, you'll be able to see how quick this is. As soon as this uh, turns into confirmed, we're going to get the webhook. Boom. It's basically instant. Uh, so we got the webhook here, and now we can see that it's one, a transaction, because every ERC20 transfer is also a native transaction because it's a contract interaction. But we're interested in, in this case because this transaction was actually doing a call to a smart contract that transferred a token is to look in the ERC20 transfers array. And uh, here you um, can see that we transferred one chaining token from this address to that address. And the same thing here, you get the, the other confirmed webhook once the transaction is fully confirmed. Now, if you want to expand on this, you can check out the uh, documentation over at docs.morales.io, hit on streams API, and here you'll be able to find under the API reference for example, how to update the stream via the API or add addresses to stream. So you can input your stream ID, which you will find here in the list. 
you can input that here and then you can add an array of addresses to the stream so that you can do you can build your own kind of tool for managing your stream adding you know a lot of addresses in case you have an application where you're monitoring a lot of addresses or you have customers they want to monitor their addresses for and as soon as someone registers you want to add the the uh, the wallet address here you can do that via the api you can also update the stream configuration or create streams if you want to do that through the api instead of the ui and that is how you monitor a wallet address using Morales Streams. Another way to extend this would be, for example, that every time you do get the webhook, you can use our APIs to update the user's information about their, let's say, their net worth or uh, about their wallet history. Uh, so you have APIs for that. As we can see here in our wallet API, you can get wallet history, get wallet net worth. You can get balances, NFTs, tokens all types of details you can also get prices there, there are a lot of things here for you to check out but in terms of getting real-time notifications whenever something happens to make sure that you stay up to date on whatever happens in the user's wallet and you want it done in a very quick way as you saw and it's incredibly reliable as i said uh, you will never miss a webhook and if you're on the enterprise plan we will even extend that into an sla and guarantee you that you will not miss a single webhook um, so that is Morales Streams. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment down in the, the script or in the description in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.